And I reckon he be the one that sent you up this way. He will never learn. So you're the ranger? That's right. It's rare I come by this part of the forest at night, but I saw what I assume is your van parked up over there. I mean, you're the guy saying you're the ranger, but I've seen too many Bath County horror films to fall for that one. Well, you butter my butt and you call me Biscuit. You got me there, boy. Listen, I don't blame you. It's good to be suspicious. Now, I will be skedaddling. Like I said, I was just piddling around, came across your van, and then I saw you fetching Bunch. Thought I'd check in and make sure all was all right. That cabin, um, not too far from here. Who's that guy? Oh, that'd be Darnell. Torrance. Ooh, you are up to speed on your Lee County celebrities. So, the guy in the cabin is the one from the stories in Lizard Place. Ooh, you got it in one. I'm assuming you're up to speed on the story. Thirty odd years ago now. Well, after that night, Darnell, he was never really the same again. He became what you would call the truth seeker. You know, someone who seeks out aliens and whatnot. He set up in the forest about 15 years ago now, and he is hell bent on finding that damn lizard. And your thoughts on that thing? Well, God knows the town has prospered. My brother's prospered. But me, <laughs> I ain't wet behind the ears. A lizard man. But Darnell, he's his own man. If he wants to dedicate his life to trying to find some fabricated reptilian creature, then so be it. I reckon it's got something to do with some long-term PTSD. Could we have done more in the town to help him? Yeah, and that does play on my mind from time to time. So let me get this straight. This darn old chap did lose his parents that night. There wasn't any wonder what happened to them. It was a well-known fact that Stanley, Darnell's pop, was a fan of the Amber Nectar. Now, he was driving home from a party, and it doesn't take a rocket scientist to work out the easiest common denominator there. Uh, the car was found abandoned in the middle of the road. So, you think Stanley's to blame? If not Stanley, who? Darnell? No. A lizard man? No. It was an open and close case. Stanley chucked Nancy into the swamp and he scuppered on out of here. Poor Darnell. He, he must got lost when he went looking for his mom. And they found him floating up the swamp. I still remember seeing it on the news like it was yesterday. Sorry, my brief introduction has gone on longer than a Sunday afternoon. I will leave you be. Watch where you step around these parts. He's laid traps. He says it's for hunting season, but we all know he ain't hunting no game. Till we meet again, kiddos. Good night. Don't let the lizard bite. Well, that was a buzzkill. I've had enough of creepy men wandering around this place. One night out here is enough for me. Tomorrow morning, I think I'm gonna knock on Darnell's cabin. What on earth would make you do that? I need to see if he really does have that specimen. I could help him prove if, if the creature really is some new species. Yeah, no more beer for Sid. <laughs> Don't die on me. 
Mike? If that's you, I swear I will kick the living crap out of you. It's only so far you can push a guy. Mike? If that's you, I'm telling Mom. Sounded like a scream or something in the distance. Have you never been camping before? Coming from the guy that crapped his pants like five minutes ago. Okay, in my defense, who here was expecting a creepy looking dude to come out of the shadows? Hmm? At least I crapped my pants for something here that can be seen. <laughs> Unlike you guys shaking in your boots every time a raccoon does a turd. Classy. She's right, Mike. Freddy could have fallen again or got himself caught in another bear trap. Are you kidding? Do you want me to wander into the forest looking for my bozo brother? Fine. But I'll shut you up. No, don't offer to help at all. If you want me to come, I will. I think I would prefer if at least one of you stayed. I mean, two girls being left alone while there's a creepy man and a potential loony wielding a knife. Then I think we should put who goes to a vote. I vote Mike goes. I second that. <laughs> hey, majority rules, bud. The camp's become a democracy. Yep. Screw you all. <sighs> hey, Fred! Get your ass back here! You do realize you're gonna have to put up with the moaning mic when he gets back. Oh, he'll forget all about it. Five seconds he sees what I'm wearing under this. Fair enough. Tell me you guys heard that. Yeah, yeah, I did. It sounded like Mike. Mike? Mike, you okay? Mike! You gotta go check on him. I don't like this. Yeah, we should. Okay, grab a torch and stay behind me. Wait, you're both going? You're welcome to stay if you want. Bullshit, I will. Mike? You there? Mike? What's that? That's Mike's boot. Okay. <clears throat> Stay calm. Wait here. I'll go check it out. you see? Nothing. Just the boot. Ah! It's the lizard man! He's coming to get you! Mike, you jackass! We were scared half to death! Not cool, bro. What? Ripley, come on! It's a joke! Lighten up! You know, you can sleep outside by the fire tonight. Oh, Ripley, come on! You okay? Yeah. Let's just go back. I've had enough of wandering around in this darkness. Dude, my boot. Oh, oh gently, hombre. <laughs> Ripley, come on. I said I was sorry. That boy. I two peas in a pod, him and Fred.
Ripley, come on! Great. Fat chance of getting that going again. Well, you better get to it then. I mean, it was all Jason's idea. Hey! Ripley! Ripley, come on! No, come on. It won't happen again. I'm sorry. You have my word. It was all Jason's idea, really. Hey! Don't get me involved in this. Okay, just take the black. I'll make it up to you, okay? How exactly? Okay, I will carry your bag for the rest of the trip. And? And you seem to carry rocks in that thing, you realize. Nope. Doesn't sound like you really need my help. Okay, okay, okay. Just name it, and it's done. Okay. Carry my bags. Take over the driving duties, and pay for the gas all the way home. Deal. Ripley? Mike was right. It was all my plan. Sorry. You both assholes. Okay, don't worry. I have leverage in this. My advice is to turn up that stereo at some point real soon because you're both too innocent to be hearing any strange noises, you know? Oh. <laughs> that thing might come in handy after all. Sorry, look, it was all Jason's idea. And if Jason asked you to jump up a cliff, you would? Well, that was funny, maybe. <laughs> oh, come on, I'm sorry. It won't happen again. It better not. Cross my heart. Hope to die. Huh? Hey, hope to die. You actually think you're getting lucky? After all that? Well, you did just have a traumatic experience. This would be cathartic if you think about it. Great way to release some of that negative energy. The only way to release negative energy will be kicking you out of here. Mm -hmm. Stop. Mm -hmm. Mike, you can't do that. I'm angry at you, Mike. You're evil. You know I can't resist. Stop. I know you're like this. Come on. Wait, something just went past the tent. <sighs> you're probably just a shadow of the moon. Mike, I'm serious. No, for fuck's sake. What? Hmm? I don't know. Go check. Whatever it is, I'm sure it's long gone. What if it's that creepy guy the ranger told us about? Then I would rather hide in here with you. Such a hero. <sighs> I never claimed to be one. Get your ass out there and go check. Or you can kiss goodbye to any plans to use the rubber johnnies for the rest of the trip. Fine. Okay. I guess I have no choice. Johnnies. You know, I forgot to get something. I can always ask Jason for some. He's hardly gonna need him. Now, oh, why is it always me? Yeah, this is what I get for being too nice. Babe, there's nothing out here. You didn't look. Go and check. Oh, fine. Give me a minute. I'll be back.
Already sounds like the rubs or something. If you hear anything, just turn the stereo up. At least that won't haunt my dreams. <laughs> I still don't feel right leaving Freddy out there. Honestly, he's fine. I've known him for years, and like Mike said, he's the kind of person that would resent you more for not trusting him. That still doesn't make me feel any better, even if Mike is his brother saying that. How much do you want to bet that he's at one with nature right now? I'll find him in the morning with a banana leaf around his pants and talking to his map like it's Wilson from that Tom Hanks movie. Yeah, probably. Well, it's dawn in a little over an hour. First light, I'll go out and look for him. You have my word. Thanks. I mean that. Fred? Fred! Fred, if that's you, I will box your ears, you dumbass! Fred! Fred! If you're trying to scare me, oh, it's working. Oh. Oh. Where is the fucking ranger when you need him? What was that? It sounded like Ripley screaming. Probably. That's why they gave us the stereo. Can you hear that? No. Exactly. Silence. Then his work must be done. It just seems weird, that's all. You want me to go outside and check it out? No. Yeah, 
Probably right. I'm just overthinking it. Jason, look. Mike? Ripley? You okay? Fred, that you, bud? Get your ass out here! Nice and slow. Don't you try nothing. Look at what we got here, boys. I ain't got no problem with you. Look. It was a misunderstanding. I shouldn't have threatened. <laughs> you are so fun of shit, your eyes are brown. Now, I'd apologize for making a ruckus, but that was my intent. Now, where'd them other highfalutin' guys get off to? I don't know. Wandered off in the woods earlier. Which way? Now, if you're lying to me, I'll hurt you so hard, you'll see tomorrow. Boys, what you waiting for? Get off into that yonder and fetch me a piggy. Don't move. Look, you've made your point, OK? Just leave us be. You know, there's a ranger who patrols the- Shut up! He's a... <coughs> You're not in a position to be making threats. I reckon it's just dawned on you how much shit you're in. What are them boys up to? What's going on? <laughs> you had before I cut your tail. You boys best bring that fat piece of lard back in one piece. They know I like to be the one tend that high. <laughs> what in tarnation? Yo, behind you. What? I don't know. The barrels. Man, there ain't no barrels this time of year. Quit your yapping. Well, whatever it is, it's looking directly at us. All right, don't you move a goddamn muscle. Let me handle this. That doesn't seem like a good idea. Shut your goddamn mouth. Whatever, whoever you are, you got about five seconds before I come in there and put a whomping on your ass. Come on. Come on. No time to talk. We gotta leave now. Boy, if I catch you, I will break this battle of your... God damn. Is that thing? Ripley! Come on, Sid. We gotta go. It's not safe here. That cabin. He'll have a way to call the ranger. Jason. What? Now would be a good time to get that door open. Come on. Come on now, open up. 
Who the hell are you? Get the hell off my porch! Please! Something is out here! It's right behind us! I'm just gonna keep this door in if you don't open it right now! Open it, Get in! Sit down! Sit! Y'all better start talking. How do you know my name? That thing is just outside. We need to call the ranger. <laughs> I ain't never heard something so crazy in all my years. You in the safest place here. See those eggshells out there and the hanging garlic? A deterrent. Ding, ding, bingo. Got it in one. But how does that deter it? I don't know why. The pungent smell just keeps it away. So that thing out there, it, it really is a reptile? Oh, damn. The first person in many years to see some sense. Yes. It's the famous lizard man. Now he's got your sandal driving wild. Sir, you're having us believe that that thing that's out there is a 200-pound lizard man? Hell no. You wish. 200 pounds? That's Komodo dragon territory. You could only dream of a Komodo dragon on your tail. Then what is it? Short answer, no idea. I mean, I have a good guess. My theory is it's probably some evolved, hybrid, prehistoric reptilian, some lying somewhere between a Nichiosaur and a Megalon of Prisca. Which are... Haven't they both been extinct for millions of years? Things are only extinct if you can't find them. Now, what's to say this hybrid evolved creature wasn't laying dormant for millennia. Now, something awoke that beast around 30 years ago. It's been elusive and ever-present since. It says the specimen was found in Australia, just dated back 50,000 years. Yep, you're reading right. And what does that mean? It means that up until a few years back, these things are thought to have been long gone. Now, given the timeline of man versus giant motherfucking lizard has been in our recent history, and this thing is an apex mega predator. A large animal that eats other large animals. You damn right it does. So if you were so wrong about that, what's to say we don't know shit about shit? 9,000 reptiles, and this one never been discovered. How do you know so much about reptiles? I'm studying herpetology. You got a smart ass word for everything these days, isn't they? So you were a reptile expert then? I'm more focused on functional problems like ecology, physical behavior, and evolution. Well, you just hit the jackpot tonight, then, didn't you? tracking it the whole time? Not at first. I was the crazy kid of the town. Half of them assumed I was some psycho kid who killed and murdered his family. The other half blamed my pops. He was an asshole, but he wasn't no killer. He could barely squeeze us so tight when he hugged us. Bark was always worse than his bite. 
thing that gets me to this day is the last conversation we ever had was arguing over which university I should go to. Darnell, respond when I address you. You a Gamescock or Tiger? Boy, I will slam these damn- Gamescock, okay? I mean, I was just trying to get a reaction, you know? It was his way. His way or the highway. You don't want your last conversation to be during a fallout. Eats you up inside. And then I saw him. I crashed down on the trunk of our car. Mama? Sword's claw reached down and grabbed my mama. You know what I did? Nothing. I ran. scared little child. Left my mama there defenseless. I've had to live with that for the last 30 years. My tragedy became a circus. TV stations, national newspapers, everyone picked up on it. <laughs> proof? What, what kind of proof? I don't... I don't know what you want. This is Betty Rose reporting live here in Lee County. Lee County leaned on it hard. Nobody ever really cared about the real story or helping the kid that lost everything that night. All anyone wanted to do was have a picture with a cartoon cut out and buy a lizard man top. It was a Disney attraction for the first few years. Looks like that dried up pretty fast. I ain't had its time, you know. But once you can't back it up with any evidence, it starts to become a freak show. Like some back county laughing stock to come and glow at whilst people passing through. Seem that's why they got that reward put up. Yeah. It worked for a short while. Hoax sightings hit national news. Put Lee County on the map again, or so I hear. How have you lived here for so long and not either caught the thing or become lizard food? I've been close to capturing that thing many times. It was easier at first, like it was king of the jungle. It never been hunted before, so it had no real reason for caution. A bear trap could slow it down at first. I seemed that was yours. Ah! Yeah, I figured he one of you dumbasses triggered one. They don't do much anyways. Seems to know how to maneuver its way around them, or even chew through the damn thing. You see, I started to track and trace where I saw it. At first, around here, it didn't venture too far away from the swamp. And then, as the years went by, found it harder to track. Expanded deeper into the forest. At first, I thought it hit below the surface of the swamp. Then I started finding extensive tunnels and caves all around. Didn't even know Lee County had them. Run for miles, all below the surface. So why not just go down there and kill it? Most of them aren't accessible. I mean, some you can, but I ain't never seen it around there. <sighs> Tip of the iceberg, I am sure. Though the last thing you want to do is be caught down there with no natural light. 
You could use a torch, no? It's not to do with seeing. This thing don't respond too well to daylight. And if the lizard ever gets caught out in the sun, it screams in agony. Only once in my life have I ever come close to seeing it get caught out in the daylight. It weakens it. I feel if it gets exposed to UV rays for too long, it would die. Surely these people must have family come looking for them asking questions. You'd think. But these things always get brushed off. You realize how many people go missing every year. If the police followed through on everyone that came in, they wouldn't have time to do anything else. Best thing they do for me is give me a time for when that thing is around. In what way? Like it comes up for a certain amount of time to feed. Feed? Assuming that's us. We are a walking human bucket meal for that thing. You get around three months of it, but times are changing. You can never really tell when it's back. First sign is a disappearing cattle. As when it wakes, it must be ravenous. And you're quite certain it hibernates? Jeez, the reptile expert is questioning me. Not at all. I just mean, you don't know that for sure, do you? They could just go live underground in caves for all you know. Yeah, I don't doubt it. Still, that thing hibernates or hides away for a long while. You can always tell when it's close. That thing gets erratic, desperate to feed. It's red, it goes after a group as big as yours. Maybe when you're separated, but not as a group. Now, if my calculations are right, it's probably ready to disappear again soon. You say that like you were watching us, like a guinea pig test. You compliment yourself too much. I like to think of it as bait. So you're telling me that you just allowed us to walk straight into danger and you didn't even warn us? It's a free country, kiddo. Y'all went on your own accord. You knew what was going to happen. All right. Captain Hindsight over here now, are you? So what would you have done if the creepy guy in the cabin came out and said, oh, look, the lizard man is out and is hungry tonight. Y'all better head back. Y'all would have laughed at me and carried on. So don't you damn well sit on that ivory tower of yours and give me some damn lecture and shit. Jason, he's got a point. We'd hardly have listened. You guys did nothing but mock any idea of the lizard man earlier. You should have still looked out for us. Opened that godforsaken door for you, didn't I? How long do you think you would have made it if I wasn't so accommodating? Is that what I think it is? Found this a few years back by one of the closed-off caves. It's shedding its skin. Which means it's growing. Once they outgrow their current skin, they shed it. Just peels away. All the damn time. Must have up and doubled in size since I've been on its case. Now watch this. You see why it's so hard to kill? Things running around with a bulletproof full bodysuit on. Shoot it? Like I said, the skin's bulletproof. I've tried to shoot it with a pistol, a rifle, a sniper. Every time it just ricochets off. Now watch this. Iron sharpens iron, as they say. How did you even know? Had this thing around my neck for years. Then come close to five years, I was on its trail. Then out of nowhere, it took me by surprise from the side. I was certain I was on its trail up front of me. I got sloppy. I was face to face with it. 
about to be torn to pieces. All I had in arm's distance was this thing around my neck. Out of desperation, I yanked it off and dug it in its neck. It screamed out in pain. That thing bled green, thick blood all over me. Darnell Torrance, you come out here with your hands up. Darnell, you got to be shitting me. Y'all just be bringing everyone here tonight. One, two. OK, just give me a sec. If anything should happen to me out there, this might be the only thing that keeps you alive. Run out the back door and don't stop until the sun rises. So for what do I owe the pleasure, Ed? You don't give me no shit, Darnell. You know exactly why I'm here. I've just been up to that campground where those kids were camping, and the place looks like a horror show up there. Now, we both damn well know I had nothing to do with that. Well, you could do your explaining down at the county jail. I ain't letting this slide, Darnell. Now, where are the others? Are they inside? I got two of them with me. No clue where the rest are. Now, I advise you to come and join us. It's safer for you in there. What? What? Are you threatening me? Not at all. But I know what's out there, and it ain't far. Oh, you and that goddamn lizard. Even my brother's brainwashed. Face it, Darnell. Your pa was a drunk. He caused that crash. Now move on with your life. You didn't know him. You ain't got no right talking about my dad like that. You're lecturing me on rights now, are you? Oh, please, please, make this easy on me. Don't make me force you to come in. What the hell was that? No idea. Must be a raccoon. He's here. The ranger? Nah, he had a split. But our lizard friend's around. He's on your scent. He doesn't hang around this long. He must be desperate. Now, I have a plan, and I think it might just work. What we gotta do? Well, now, seeing as he all passed the audition as bait earlier, your scent will take you where I need it to go. Grab that. Now, both of y'all follow me now. We ain't got much time before it's next meal. This may be our only window while it's distracted. Oh, and take those jackets off for a stronger scent. You sure this is gonna work? It's the one thing I've never been able to do properly. Tried a few times on my own. I take it that didn't go so well for you? I thought as much. Second time's a charm. Never had a willing piece of bait before. Considering the way it's been hunting you all, I 
think this just might work. Once it's fallen in, those spikes will only hold for a few seconds. We'll need to lay the netting over and hammer in those spikes. Got it. Then, finish it off with this. Guys. Now! Put it toward My spare, kid. I can't let you kill it. Not now we've caught it. You don't understand what you're dealing with. Don't be foolish. We're sitting on a million dollars, not to mention all the rest we'll get from it for capturing it. You won't be alive to claim the reward. This thing's not gonna hold it while you call it in. Jason, listen to him. Give it back to him. Please. A dead man can't spend his treasure. Remember that. Jason, give it back to him. Jason! Jason! I'm too old for this shit. You're dealing with the unknown here. This is personal. Gaining on us, we've got to get out of here. It's getting lighter. I hope Donnell was right. We can just make it to the van. We can get to the nearest town. Come on. Quickly, faster! Okay, calm. Sid, you're okay. Oh, no, no. Okay, uh, slower. It just needs a jolt. This isn't the time to need a battery change. Sid, the battery is brand new. Just try it. Try it again. What the heck? Okay, foot down and push when I say push. Okay, Sid, push. Push. I am! Somehow it's out of gas. What, what do we do, hide out here? We won't last five minutes in this. That thing will rip the doors right off. No. What are you thinking? Follow me. I 
need a minute. We've got to make some distance. Without a thing. Sad. Look. It's like Thornell said. It can't survive in the sunlight. It sacrificed its tooth so that it doesn't die. Come on, man. Come take me! Come take me! Come on! I can see you there! Jason, leave it! Come on, I know you want to pounce with me right now. I'm gonna finish this prehistoric freak of nature once and for all! I mean, we've been covering this for 15 years now, and Cletus, the shop owner, he gave us a map and instructions, all that good stuff. And I know exactly where we're going to camp out tonight. Ah, fresh lizard mate. Don't you be going nowhere. So this was yeah. there? This was designed where the siding was, was was a little building called Elmo's Butter Bean Shed. That's where um, people would take the butter beans and have them shelled. Mm -hmm. And they kept getting what they were considered vandalism and seeing a lot of odd things going on. And then a young man um, had a flat tire right there at the butter bean shed at night. And that's when he was approached by the lizard man. Hello, my name is Eddie Grant. I am the executive director of the South Carolina Cotton Museum in the little town of Bishopville, South Carolina. 
And this is where the sighting was of the lizard man back in 1988 at Skaphore Swamp, which is a swamp and water area that goes through Bishop Hill. Um, the museum itself, the Cotton Museum, has been here 19 years. And this is an agricultural community, so it is an agricultural museum and to educate people on the importance of cotton to the agriculture community and to all of South Carolina. Hi, I'm B.B. Davis, B.B. Davis, publisher of 1021 Magazine in Charlotte and known here in Lee County in Bishop of South Carolina, class of 1989, Benita Davis. The lizard man story is infamous all over the world, but I'm one of many in the class with Christopher Davis, known as just Chris, who knew the accounts before they hit the papers in Lee County. Chris was coming home from McDonald's and um, he stopped on the side of the road in Lee County in the community of Brown Town where there is a swamp, he stopped to change the tires. And this is the official story that was um, not pumped up by the press. Um, he changed the tires and he said, immediately as he got into the car, he heard something coming from the, the swamp area of the forest. And as he pulled away, it was brown with scales with red eyes that jumped on the top of the vehicle. And he was going at about 20, he said, miles per hour up to 20. And it was still from running beside the car to jumping on the hood of the car. He managed to get the beast, as he stated, off of the car. And when he got home, he laid on the horn and his parents had to go get the extra keys out the car to get him out of the car. And so it went sensationalized from a brown scale to a green scale by the time everyone got it. They descended upon Bishopville was scientists from the UK, California, everywhere to see if they could spot the lizard man because of footprints that was left. And also in that siding along with Chris was Miss Shirley Way which I will give more information on her because she is one of the persons that had the actual footprints in her yard. Um, Chris went on all type of television shows for interviews. And so by the time we got back to school in September, we all did a private sit down as teenagers would with Chris. And we was like, Chris, tell us the story. Now, as teenagers, and Chris was very, very good looking, no teenage guy is gonna say that there were mistakes happen, you know, when you get real shocked, maybe in your lower area, you lose your cool as teenagers. So we knew the story was real and that he was frightened because no kids, and especially kids of color, and no guys that are popular like that is gonna ever admit to that. His parents backed up this story because my mom, who is a retired teacher, his mother worked at the cafeteria and she said how they had to pry his hands off the steering wheel. So we do believe that the uh, story was real because no teenager in their right mind in that summer, we have other things to do other than to for him to say something like that. So um, riding through that way to go to friends' homes at night, we all would be packed in cars and driving probably about 50, 60 miles per hour through that way because we were just also scared. But um, it was, quite the moment. It was a lot of us who just lived it. And so when we went off to college and people asked us about it, when we saw um, some of the accounts on Animal Planet, we were just like, yeah, it's, it was true. And we believed him. He had nothing to lose. We had nothing to lose. I worked at KFC. Well, it was Kentucky Fried Chicken, Kentucky Fried Chicken then. It wasn't KFC. And I remember some of the scientists come in and ask, what did I feel about uh, what Christopher accounts was? And I was just like, it was true because after the summer, um, after a football game, we all just met at Hardy's, which still is here today. And um, he get, he went through the accounts. And I, again, it was believable because, you know, teenagers, and especially guys, they don't lose their cool with girls like that. And so, you know, definitely I feel like he was telling the truth.
He said that it stood, from what he could tell, running beside the car, going from like five miles up to 20 miles per hour, over six feet, and had brown scales and red eyes and the tail and everything. And, you know, we believed him. And, and to this day, even riding through that area um, where I did, you know, can ride or just go through, you know, you can still just feel that feeling even back all these years. And the class of 89, born in 1971, we all just turned 50 this year. So I actually turned 50 last Saturday. And so, uh, yeah, we, we all believed him. You won't find no one in that class, like no teenager who didn't believe his accounts. We definitely believed it was true. He had nothing to lose. He had nothing absolutely to lose.